This video is a director's cut of three individual balsamic videos we released last summer, and it's kind of fixing a failed experiment. In this version, we redid the voiceover transitions, updated a ton of graphics to match Cookwell, made it more concise, and it now watches as a full length deep dive, which is really the standard that I wanna hold this channel to. And if this is your first time, balsamic is still such a unique and underrated ingredient to have in your pantry, but you definitely need to understand the categories and differences between them. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and let's learn about balsamic. What if I told you, you have probably never tasted real balsamic vinegar? That is, unless you remember spending over $100 on a tiny bottle, and the liquid that came out was syrupy, sweet, sour umami, and has an age complexity that is completely different than the $4 bottle that I grew up using that is thin like water and dominantly sour. Well, in this video, we are doing a deep dive into the world of balsamic vinegar, which might be one of the most confusing ingredients to buy in a U.S. grocery store. But if chosen correctly, balsamic vinegar can make boring food taste amazing. So here are a couple of questions we need to figure out. First, what makes real balsamic vinegar so expensive and why does it have a completely different flavor profile? Two, what actually is the difference between authentic balsamic and the typical varieties found at the grocery store? And lastly, three, can you actually taste a difference in your cooking? And once we answer these questions, you'll be able to confidently buy the best bottle at the store. So to start, let's figure out why is real balsamic vinegar so expensive? And we begin in the birthplace of balsamic, a country renowned for several of the most popular foods in the world, Italy. Traditional balsamic is a type of vinegar that originates from Italy and is known for its complex, sweet, and tangy flavor. In addition, it has a luxurious viscous texture, making it primarily useful as a garnish or topping compared to the thin watery stuff that most of us might be used to. It is made from the must of grapes in either the Reggio Emilia or Modena regions of Italy. Now a very important item to note with this bottle is this. The only ingredient used to make traditional balsamic vinegar is grape must. Authentic DOP balsamic vinegar is made from 100% grape must. There is absolutely no other ingredients added to this. And this will be important to remember when we start looking at the other options you can find at the store, and it begins to explain why this tiny 100 milliliter bottle is so expensive. According to the Balsamic Traditional website, in order to make authentic DOP balsamic, it goes through four basic steps. First, the grapes from the Modena or Reggio Emilia regions are harvested when ripe and then pressed down into the grape must, which is a concentrate of the natural sweet juices, skins, seeds, and stems of the grapes. Next, the grape must is cooked over open air boilers, which evaporates some of the water and concentrates the sugars of the grape juice. Once cooked and cooled, the must then goes through fermentation and acidification. And this is done by naturally selected yeast and ferments in the vinegar cellar. And if this sounds familiar to winemaking, you're not wrong. At a general level, vinegar is made from a fermented alcohol that is allowed to oxygenate and over-ferment, which breaks down most of the alcohol into acetic acid. And acetic acid is what gives vinegar its signature sour taste. After fermentation and acidification, the final step is maturation and aging. And this is where the grape must is patiently concentrated. And as the website puts it, this is the final step that leads to the inimitable organoleptic complexity of traditional balsamic vinegar of Modena. Or in layman's terms, this is where the magic happens. After going through the first three steps, the grape must needs to be aged for a minimum of 12 years in a battery. And a battery is a set of barrels with decrease in volumes, often made with different types of wood and the vinegar is progressively concentrated and transferred to smaller barrels before finally being ready for production at least 12 years later. And because of this process, the balsamic vinegar gets infused with aromas of aged wood that supposedly add a ton of complexity. And I can safely say, after cracking open my own $150 bottle and pouring myself some, it kind of messed with my mind. I never knew that balsamic could taste like this. First time trying real balsamic vinegar. Let's see what it tastes like. So interesting. Deeply complex. Sweet, it's sour, but almost like hints of 
like maple in a way. That is very, very interesting. Now, one more quick thing. After the balsamic is removed from the final barrel, before it goes to be bottled, it must pass an organoleptic test by a commission of expert tasters, where it is evaluated based on a bunch of different metrics. I'll link the sources if you want to read more, as it's pretty rigorous, but this includes items such as it must have a density higher than 1.24, it must have an acidity greater than 4.5, and then it's evaluated based on sight, taste, and smell. If the balsamic does not pass, it is returned to the barrel for another year, but if it does finally pass, it is then ready to be bottled. And as you can guess, this long process and the reduction in liquid is what makes traditional balsamic so expensive. The average bottle that is imported from Italy is over $100 for 100 milliliters or about 3.5 ounces. Now, if you want to get the authentic stuff, as I teased earlier with the bottle shapes, you better know what to look out for. An authentic balsamic will only be packaged in two bottle shapes. And if it's not in one of these bottles, it's not traditional balsamic. The balsamic made with grapes from the Reggio Emilia region are going to be in an upside down tulip shaped bottle. And the balsamic from Modena, Italy is in a 100 milliliter balsamic drop or teardrop shaped bottle, which I thought was kind of odd. But when I heard the story, it makes a lot of sense. Due to the high price and coveted taste, imitations were a big problem for recognizing authentic DOP vinegar from Modena. So in 1987, the Chamber of Commerce hired a young automotive designer, Giorgetto Giaguaro, to design their bottle shape as a way to guarantee authenticity, and it's a similar story for the bottle used in Emilia Romagna. Now additionally, both of these will be sealed with a serial number and have the red DOP stamp, and they each have versions that can actually be aged longer than 12 years. Emilia Romagna has three classifications, the bronze, silver, and gold, while Modena has just two, Vecchio for their 12-year aged and Extra Vecchio for the 25-year aged version. Now again, in the US at least, you'll probably have to special order these online as you'll likely never see them in your local grocery store unless it happens to be a specialty store because mine was literally behind lock and key on the top shelf. Okay, so now that we know why this little bottle is so expensive, we need to switch gears and talk about how this stuff is typically used because it's much different from how I and probably you grew up using balsamic vinegar. From a flavor perspective, why does traditional balsamic vinegar taste so good and why is it so versatile? Like the fact that you could sit down with a salad, steak, and a bowl of ice cream and use this as a garnish for all three is kind of crazy to think about. I gotta say, this is probably the best steak dinner I've ever made. So let's break down the flavor equation. The flavor equation is made up of six elements. Taste, aroma, and texture. These are items you've probably heard about, but also things like sight, such as contrast, physical reactions, spicy food, or the human experience, for example, what mood you are in, can all influence how we perceive the flavor of food. Now, we'll do a full video breaking down this equation at some point, but for purposes of this video, the differences between bottles of balsamic can primarily be explained through taste, aroma, and texture, as each of the six bottles we are evaluated have a different flavor profile. And in short, there are six key properties that traditional balsamic has. Of the five tastes, balsamic is predominantly sour from that acetic acid but it's also a little sweet from the natural sugars in the concentrated grape juice. And what's also pretty interesting is that traditional balsamic is slightly umami. In this study, the aged versions of balsamic were found to have small amounts of glutamic acid, which is one of the responsible compounds for umami taste receptors. And from taste alone, this is a very unique balanced profile and shows why it works on both sweet foods like ice cream, but also savory foods like steak. Now, from a texture perspective, traditional balsamic has a higher density or viscosity than water. Water swishes around, as we all know, but the traditional balsamic is much thicker, so it lingers longer on our salad greens, sandwiches, and tongue. And as we will see, the texture is an obvious differentiator between many of the bottles at the store. And lastly, we have the aroma, or smells. So if I close my nose and give this a taste, I only get the sour, sweet, and kind of umami flavor 
But as soon as I open my nose, I'm getting hit with all this complexity of amazing aromas. Now, there are probably hundreds of individual aroma molecules, but the two dominant composite smells I'm gonna use for this case study are fruity from the grapes, and then secondly are kind of the aged wood notes. And this specific version is kind of mapley, and this results from the aging process. These woody maple aromas are what make traditional balsamic so interesting in terms of flavor. Now, I can use this information to create a spider graph flavor profile for our traditional balsamic that looks something like this. Now, this is a subjective measurement of how I'm perceiving these different properties, but this is a similar process to how coffee is analyzed by a panel of taste testers. And this chart helps explain why traditional balsamic is kind of a chameleon acidic condiment that is primarily used as a garnish or toppings on foods that range from sweet to savory. And from the back of the $150 bottle box, they mention that traditional balsamic is ideal for grilled and boiled vegetables, fish and seafood, foie gras, cured meat, pasta, pizza, risotto, barbecue meat, cheeses, vanilla ice cream, cheesecake, strawberries, or it can be consumed alone at the end of the meal for good digestion. Now, what's most interesting about this list is what's missing. If you look again, grilled and boiled vegetables are on there, but there's no mention of salad or salad dressing, which in the United States is probably the number one thing that balsamic vinegar is most known for. Could this be a random omission? Maybe, but more likely, I think Modena treats traditional 100% grape must balsamic as a fundamentally different product that maybe shouldn't be wasted by mixing into a salad dressing like the cheap bottles that can be found at the store. So after hearing about all of this, while traditional balsamic is amazing, there is a big elephant in the room, which is the price. This is simply way too expensive to be used for the everyday home cook. So a test we are about to do is, can you make a cheap balsamic vinegar taste like the real thing? However, before we get there, let's uncover question number two. What is the difference between real balsamic vinegar and the typical ones found at the grocery store? Because when I went out to the store to start researching this video, I was quickly overwhelmed with all of the different options and trying to figure out what the differences were. For example, the traditional stuff might be 100% grape must, but after spending 30 minutes in the aisle, I realized every other bottle has some added ingredients. Also, five of these bottles have the IGP stamp from Modena, Italy, but all five of them cost different amounts, have different names, and order of ingredients. On one, grape must is listed first, but on the others, it's not, which we'll see is one of the telltale signs for significantly different texture. Also, why are some of these thin like water, and is the balsamic glaze that much different from the traditional version? Well, in short, there are four categories of balsamic vinegar you'll typically see at the store, and you need to understand the flavor differences between them. And the first category of balsamic, like we just talked about, is traditional. Whether it's the Vecchio or Extra Vecchio bottles from Modena, or the 12, 20, or 25 years age one from Reggio Emilia, these all fall under traditional balsamic, which are categorized by 100% cooked grape must, there's no added ingredients, they're aged for a minimum of 12 years, and they have a high density, in addition to a high price tag and that red DOP stamp. The second category of balsamic is condiment grade. And this is kind of a loose category catch-all for younger versions of traditional balsamic that have been diluted with wine vinegar. So it's categorized by cooked grape must between 50 and 100%, added ingredients or wine vinegar. It can have some aging, it has a medium high density, and it can have some certification like the IGP stamp, and the prices range anywhere from 15 to maybe $50 or above. The third balsamic category is vinegar-based, and these are the more water-like consistency balsamics that are made with more wine vinegar than grape must. So the added ingredients are wine vinegar, concentrated grape must, and caramel color, and these typically have no aging. The density is very low, similar to water, but these also have the lowest price. The fourth category is reductions and glazes. And these are a little confusing because I would technically say it's not balsamic vinegar. It's more of a product made with balsamic vinegar. Let me explain. So in short, you can easily make these yourself by reducing balsamic vinegar with some sugar or a thickening ingredient. Commercially, these have the widest range of added ingredients and qualities. 
Some are made with higher quality balsamics of Modena, some use a lot of sugar to control the taste and texture, or others use thickening ingredients like cornstarch or xanthan gum. And in general, these have a very high density that's even thicker than the traditional stuff and have a price point generally between $5 to maybe $15, depending on the ingredients that are used. Now, there are a couple of points worth mentioning here. First, these aren't perfect categories. There might actually be a little overlap between them. And secondly, we're looking at the differences in these categories from a macro level. For example, a 12 and 25 year age balsamic are both gonna fall into the traditional category, but will have slightly different flavor profiles. Or the condiment grade category, which we'll see, probably has the widest range of flavor profiles as you can spend 15 to $50. So naturally, we should actually try to taste some and see what these differences are. And I was curious, how different are the balsamics in these various categories? And do any of them get remotely close to the traditional stuff? So I bought a bunch of different balsamics and set up a tasting flight, and it's super interesting to see how the flavor profile evolves from the cheapest all the way to the most expensive bottle. So I never realized just how many options for balsamic vinegars there are and all the different varieties, because like these are all IGP uh, or DOP standards, but they're all completely different products. And I've already been able to tell some differences between them as I kind of just poured them out. But what I'm really most interested to is see the taste differences between these, the texture differences, the aromas, and then ultimately this will decide how we use them and decide which one may make the most sense for you to purchase at home. So for this test, I use six different bottles of balsamic vinegar, and these are all from Modena, Italy, and they do use the leaf system, which I'll touch on in a little later. But what I did was just go down the line one by one, and here were the big takeaways for each. So starting with the cheapest one leaf balsamic from Modena, this basically just tasted like straight distilled white vinegar to me. It's the same watery texture and it's basically pure sour, though there may be a hint of fruitiness, but absolutely no aged wood notes like the traditional. The two leaf bottle that was like a dollar more was basically the same, maybe a little bit more fruity notes, but again, just was kind of like water and reminded me a lot of distilled white vinegar. The three leaf balsamic started to have a little bit more change. It was slightly more viscous texture, however, noticeably more fruity, though the taste was still pretty dominantly sour. There's no sweetness, there's no umami, and definitely no aged wood notes. And all three of these I would put in the vinegar-based category. There's more wine vinegar than grape must in these, and as far as drinking them plain like this, I would not recommend. However, both the four-leaf vinegars, there was a big difference. Right away, the texture is completely obvious that it's much thicker. Secondly, there is now a sweetness and maybe a slight umami quality to the taste, and it's just so much more enjoyable to consume on its own like this. There also is significantly more fruity aromas, probably from a higher concentration of that grape must. And these two actually started to remind me of the traditional balsamic from a taste and texture standpoint, other than one thing. And that is the aged wood notes. The grape must in the $18 bottle has been aged for three years, and there's a tiny hint of aged wood, maybe, but only that was because I was trying to pick up on it. Their traditional stuff is a whole new ball game with those deeply complex aged maple notes. So none of these truly got close to the authentic stuff, but you may be wondering, is there a way that we could kind of impart some of those aged and more complex aromas from another ingredient into a balsamic and try to replicate the traditional one? And according to this America's Test Kitchen article, they say you can. So naturally, I had to put it to a blind taste test. For this, I made a reduction based on their recipe with one third cup balsamic vinegar, one tablespoon of sugar, and one tablespoon of a 12 year aged port wine. And all you have to do is bring that to a simmer and let the mixture reduce by half. And here's the flavor theory behind how this works. So the sugar obviously adds sweetness to the taste and cooking it down transforms the texture and also rounds out that harsher sour taste. And the 12 year aged port adds those aged wood notes that we have been missing. So does it actually taste just like the traditional balsamic? No, 
I did a blind taste test where I filled up four bowls, two with the traditional and two with the instant balsamic, shuffled them up and then took one away to see if I can distinguish which two were the same and which one was different. Definitely different than number one, I'll tell you that. This is definitely the one homemade with sugar. It's just much slower to get out um, and also it tastes pretty sweet. These two hit my tongue a lot quicker and more sour than, than sweet. Now, just because I could tell the difference between the homemade and the traditional in a side-by-side -side taste test does not mean this stuff is bad. In fact, it's actually quite good. And I got two key takeaways from this test. First is that this stuff is way better than the store-bought balsamic glaze, which for the bottle that I happened to buy at the store was just way too sweet. And secondly, I think you could dial this homemade glaze to get it even closer to the traditional stuff. And if any of you wanna do some experiments, here's what I would try. First, I would try out a condiment grade balsamic. Secondly, I would experiment with different ratios of balsamic to sugar to port. Thirdly, I would try adjusting the cooking time to dial in that consistency. And fourth, try adding some MSG for a little bit of that umami kick and you might be able to get like 85 to 90% closer to the traditional stuff. Obviously, you'll need to spend some time, money, experimentation to get there, but if you can get close to 85 or 90%, it may be worth the effort. So we've gone through all the flavor profile of these various bottles. You understand a lot of the ingredients that are in these things, and you might be wondering, you know, which one should I end up buying? And before we get there, there's kind of a problem. And that is, it's really easy to taste the difference in a side-by-side -side sipping test, but what happens when you actually start testing it on different foods, like ice cream, steak, salad, pizza, or that viral healthy Coke TikTok? Are you still able to taste a difference between the $6 or the $15, or what about the $150 traditional one? So to figure that out, I ran through four different experiments where I tested out various balsamic vinegars from each category. The steak test, the greens test, the ice cream test, and that healthy Coke test. After we discuss the experiment observations, I'll break down a balsamic buying guide so you can make an informed and confident decision next time you are at the grocery store and experiment with your own balsamic creations. Because if you get the right bottle, using balsamic for just salad is completely old news. Instead, balsamic can be used to amplify ice cream, steak, pizza, hoagies, a weird bowl of leftovers, and it can even be used to transform seltzer water into a healthy tasting Coke. Oh, they're getting worse. Okay, that last one was kind of a lie, but the rest of them are true. Now, as a quick disclaimer, with these taste tests, my goal is to give you all the information you need so you can make an informed decision. This is not about trying to find a specific brand that is the best overall because there's countless options of balsamic out there. Additionally, I'm just one person and I would highly recommend trying these for yourself sometime because it's really quite fun, but it also helps train your palate because for some of these tests, I was able to instantly tell which one I was tasting tongue immediately starts watering so much more. It's, it's very clear. Now for each taste test, I'll pop up the candidates and the flavor profiles. So with that being said, let's hop into test number one, the steak test. For the steak test, I chose one bottle from each category. These were the one leaf vinegar based, the four leaf condiment grade, the homemade reduction, and lastly, the DOP traditional version from Modena. And all I did was brine a steak overnight and then seared it on high and brought it to 125 degrees Fahrenheit internal. After cooking, I let it rest for a few minutes before slicing in and separating the steak out into portions. To each portion, I added a drizzle of each balsamic to the steak, starting with the vinegar base, the four leaf, the homemade reduction, and lastly, the DOP traditional version. Now with this test, I'm curious about these three questions. First, is balsamic vinegar actually good on steak? Secondly, can I tell the difference between the categories? And third, is there a clear favorite? And after mixing them up, the traditional balsamic ended up being the first one I tried and I enjoyed it right away. That's really quite good. Now, as I moved down to the second one, while still good, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I didn't like it as much as the first one. That one was pretty good. I think number one was definitely better. Number three. As I moved down to steak number three, I was confident in saying exactly which one I thought this was. All right, I'm pretty sure that this is the vinegar based one, probably due to the texture, but also like the, the sourness. It's still good though. 
And lastly, stake number four was again pretty solid. Yeah, one, two, and four are all very good. Way better than number three in my opinion, but three's not bad. So was I able to tell a difference between the categories? Yes, I definitely was. But while I could tell, they did still taste good in their own right. And here is my final conclusion on this test. Such an interesting pairing that totally works. Okay, so one was the traditional. That was definitely my favorite. Super just amazing blend. Number three was the vinegar-based one. It's it's super obvious to tell that th like this is like the clear outlier here. One, I, like I said, it was my favorite, but two and four were actually sneaky kind of close. I couldn't differentiate these all that well, which is kind of interesting because in the reduction, it was, I feel like pretty easy to tell a difference between kind of the sweetness that was coming through, even in the homemade one. Um, one, definitely my favorite. Two and four though, I would put about equal level playing field. And then number three is a, a step below. It's clearly more acidic, but man, that is very, very interesting. That's just a good combo. And it's literally 10.30 in the morning and I enjoyed this steak mighty thoroughly. So after my morning steak, I figured it was time for some greens and this test was very basic on purpose. I separated out five bowls of arugula and added a drizzle of olive oil to each of them before adding the balsamic. For the test candidates, I used the same four bottles from the steak test, except I did add an extra vinegar based, which was the three leaf balsamic. And with this test, arugula is a very bitter green when compared to something like butter crunch or romaine lettuce. So that's something to think about as we go through. And additionally, before even getting to the tasting, you can see the differences in the textures. Now, after shuffling these up and tasting each of them, I had two key observations. First, the vinegar based balsamics make your mouth water much more. It's pretty crazy just how different these are once you taste them like this. Because of this physical reaction to the sour taste, it's super easy to tell the difference between the vinegar based balsamics and the other categories. That's definitely one of the vinegar based ones. Tongue immediately like starts watering so much more. It's, it's very clear. And as a sub observation, I was able to tell the difference between the three leaf and the one leaf balsamic. Again, I'm just about positive. That's the vinegar based one. More liquidy, way more sour. However, this is not a bad thing. I actually like these vinegar based balsamics with the arugula because it contrasts really well with the bitter flavor of the greens. Bitter greens like this are perfect for balsamic just because you get a sour, little bit of sweet, and it really contrasts super well. My second observation is this. The smell or aroma is what makes the big difference between the condiment reduction and traditional versions. As I was tasting the other three categories, the taste was getting a little lost compared to the dominant bitter flavor of the greens. However, as soon as I gave them a sniff, I immediately knew which one was which. So based on smell, four is way more complex than number five. I'm pretty sure number one's the reduction because when I made it, it, this is what it smelled like. So I'm gonna guess number one's reduction. Number two is the three leaf. Number three is the one leaf, which are, these are both vinegar based. Four, traditional. Five is the condiment or four leaf grade. Let's see if I'm correct. Reduction, three leaf, vinegar, traditional, and condiment. So it is pretty crazy, like you can really pick up and, and the big difference between the traditional one is the aroma, like it's such a unique aroma. But really all of these were delicious in their own right. Um, this is way more acidic, which might be really nice depending on the salad or the mood you're in for. It really gets your tongue watering. This is like deeply complex and just really, really good. Again, unlike anything I've had. But the condiment and the reduction are great options if you do want something thicker that's also not quite as sour as these two. So this is a super interesting test that maybe don't do all five, but you could do a vinegar based versus a condiment and see which one that you like more for your salad. So with these first two tests, we are more in the savory side of things, but the next test was the one I was most looking forward to, the ice cream test. For this ice cream test, I grabbed four dishes of vanilla ice cream and added a variety of balsamics. Two of them were vinegar based, the one leaf and three leaf, and then the condiment grade four leaf or three year age one, and lastly, traditional. And I tried the vinegar based balsamics on the ice cream first, but as you can see by my facial expression, 
These were just flat out not good at all. Way too sour. Ooh, that is not good. However, that started to change when I got to the condiment grade balsamic. We are definitely starting to work with something here. The sour taste was a little bit more rounded out and obviously the texture is less watery, but when I got to that traditional version on the ice cream, it brought it to a completely new level. That truly messes with my mind a little bit. It's crazy how, how good that tastes. Those aged wood aromas almost made it feel like a sour maple syrup in the best way possible. I literally licked that bowl clean. This is a fascinating use case for balsamic vinegar. And really for me, I think it best showcases the real difference between all of these products. And you gotta make sure you get the right one or else you'll end up with some really bad and sour tasting liquidy ice cream. For our last test, Italians, please look away because this was the biggest waste of my precious traditional balsamic. Does anyone remember this healthy Coke TikTok that went viral? Well, the idea is you add some balsamic to seltzer water and it tastes something like a Coke. So for this, I grabbed out five glasses and added 100 milliliters of plain bubbly water before adding two grams of each balsamic. And these were the vinegar based, one leaf and three leaf, the store bought reduction, the condiment grade, and lastly, the traditional. And for a control, I brought out a Coke Zero. I blindfolded up and shuffled up the glasses before using the straw contraption. And I did try to add the straws blindfolded too before I realized that I can't see them behind the cardboard anyway, but it really didn't matter because as I tasted them, it just went from bad to worse. These are really not good. So the reduction and traditional were bad themselves, but then I got into the vinegar baseball sonics, which were just terribly sour. However, I finally got some sweet relief from oh. the Diet Coke. It's like sweet relief once you get to the Coke Zero. Uh, all five of these would not recommend using your balsamic this way. Bro, three is so bad. I'm gonna assume that this is probably traditional and the reduction, these are probably the, what, like one to one three leaf and the four leaf. And then obviously we got our Coke on the end. Let's see what we have. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, I was able to clearly pick out the, the reduction and the traditional. The actual traditional was the best tasting one. And I thought it would be the reduction just from the ad additional sugar that this is made with, but that is actually pretty surprising. And you can clearly pick up that like, these two especially are terrible. Um, this one is almost as equally as just like very sour and acidic. Um, and then, yeah, if you're looking for a, a, a healthy Coke, just buy Coke or Diet Coke or Coke Zero. Um, none of these are really gonna do anything for you. So we've learned that there are some clear flavor differences between the four categories, and you can definitely taste that difference in your food. But after going through all of this, you're probably still wondering, what bottle should I actually buy? Well, for the average home cook, if you want to stock a single bottle in your pantry, I would recommend picking up a bottle of the condiment grade balsamic. Why exactly? Well, I think you get the best value for the price. Let me explain. The traditional balsamic was my clear favorite along the way, and I think it's the best balsamic to use as a garnish, but I wouldn't say it's $100 better than a 20 ish dollar bottle that still has a nice consistency and some aged notes to it. Secondly, the condiment grade can also be used for a pre-mixed salad dressing that you may use the vinegar-based one for. And thirdly, this bottle can also be mixed with a little bit of sugar and reduced so you can make your own balsamic glaze if you need it that's gonna be better than a store-bought version. Remember, each category of balsamic vinegar is fundamentally pretty different in terms of its flavor profile and ultimately how they can be used. However, with the condiment grade, it's almost a hybrid of all the other three categories. Also, as a director's note, I still stand by the fact that at least once in your life, I think you should try to pick up some of the traditional stuff. I have about a third of a bottle left, and it truly is such a unique product compared to all the other balsamic vinegar out there. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at a director's cut of the balsamic videos we released last summer. I was looking at those, and they were just kind of bugging me on my feed because I, I really felt like I should have just buckled down and released those as one video, but was busy with vacation and some other stuff at the time. So I couldn't do it then, but happy to do it now. And I feel like this is how 
this topic really needs to live on YouTube because it's fun when you can look at all the context and lead you to that final answer of, you know, what balsamic should you be using at home? So hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Thank you for watching this. If this is your second time through or your first, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace y'all.